pre-update update so I can show you what I've done to the uh, uh, electrodes before I actually put it on and use it so that after I use it I can report back on how well it worked so basically you know before I just had the uh, the wire coming through here and sticking out into the uh, into the uh, sponge and then I thought well you know maybe I could reduce the itching sensation if I could spread out that current into a wider area so I just I cut a couple of pieces of alumina out of a, a beer can and then brushed off the um, the, the coating on the inside um, and I was gonna solder the wire on there but then I found out solder does not stick to brushed aluminum at all so um, I just thought well how about if I just dab some uh, salt water on there and then put a, a piece of uh, aluminum foil on top of that uh, but that didn't work uh, I did not get full current throughput so then I remembered I dabbled in EEG a long time ago and I still had this this uh, conductive gel sitting in a, on a shelf it's been there it's been there so long the the tube actually just dried up and cracked open just from sitting on a shelf for 15 years but the stuff is still in there it's still good so what I'm doing now is I put some of this gel on here then the, the wire sticks down into that and then cover that with the aluminum foil like I've done here and so we'll see if that'll work better and uh, then I've also got some other updates on the circuit that I'll you know talk about uh, um, in a minute or well after my session so back in a minute All right, it's, uh, it's actually been a couple of days since uh, I uh, made these aluminum electrodes. Um, and they worked, um, but there were some issues. I'll get to that in just a second. I just, first, I just want to show you how I use this uh, connector here. This is just a clothespin, and that's a wood screw and a washer, so I can clip this to my shirt collar and it works just fine also as you may have noticed previously I am using the the audio jack uh, to connect everything up now uh, I forgot to mention that before so what about these electrodes they worked but not the way I was expecting what happened was when I got everything all connected up and ready to do my session I turned it on and I was only getting just a little over one milliamp of, of throughput, you know. And I thought, well, that's no good. So I turned it off and then I, uh, I took out that resistor that I had here, just shorted across. And, you know, then I turned it back on again and it was getting up around, say, 1.2. And uh, still not where I wanted to be, but I thought, well, you know, I'm all strapped in here. I might as well just go through the session. So, you know, I went back to what I was doing, a crossword puzzle or whatever, and uh, a couple minutes later I looked back and hey, it, creep, it was up around 1.6, 1.7. And I thought, huh, well, that's, that's interesting. So I looked back again in a couple of minutes and it was up around 1.9. And then I thought, well, this is, I've got to keep an eye on this. And then it got all the way up to like 2.2, 2.3, and I started to... I had to use the 10k potentiometer to trim it back and and it kept wanting to rise for several minutes and well, it was probably a good 10 minutes in when I finally got it to balance balance out and and you know stay stable but uh, you know that's undesirable behavior in, in the circuit I want it to be more stable than that um, and I thought well why is it doing that maybe this is just too too much area too diffuse for you know the current to find its way through that thick sponge maybe it just takes a while to, to build up enough to, to saturate let's say uh, to, to find a pathway and that's why the current was rising up so I thought well maybe I can make it kind of 
halfway in between more diffuse than just a single wire but not as diffuse as that so this is what I came up with so this is a stranded wire from uh, I just there's an old electrical cord I pulled off a, an old fan that was being thrown out and uh, so I just cut a couple inches of that off and stripped it and uh, this is soldered to the uh, 22 gauge wire same type of wire I was using before not a very good connection because I'm using this crappy cheap two dollar soldering iron once I get a better iron I'll, I'll reflow that joint and it should be fine another thing you may notice is that there's leaching copper is leaching into the uh, into the sponge and I believe this is the anode um, I would I'd have to look it up to be sure but um, so maybe that's part of how the uh, the current is building up because it's leaching copper into the sponge and that's creating a better electrical pathway now the there was some I guess you call it current creep with this setup as well but it wasn't as bad as with with that it was much easier to control so I'm gonna have to do some more ex experimentation with this to find out what you know what really works best how much resistance do I want here um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the way to go for the electrode um, it works pretty well I just want to work out what exactly is going on there and uh, luckily the uh, electronic shops are opening up should be open tomorrow so yay I'm looking forward to that um, so that's all for now. I will, you know, once I've done my experimentation, I'll come back and report my findings in a couple of days. So that's it for now. Take care. Oh, and uh, one other thing I forgot to mention. If you do want to pursue the uh, beer can electrode method, you don't have to buy that 1020 gel. Uh, you can make your own. There's a couple of... Uh, uh, recipes I found here online and I'll put the links in the description of this video.